Example 6.5. In this example, we use the experimental test using air as the working fluid around a portion of a turbine blade. The heat flux of the blade at a particular position X star is given to be 95,000 kilowatts per meter square. To maintain a steady temperature of 800 Celsius, there is a coolant inside of the blade. The first part we need to determine the heat flux of the blade at the same position X star if the temperature is reduced to 700 instead of 800. In the second part, we need to determine the heat flux at the same location, X star, for a similar shaped turbine. The only difference is that the length doubles to 80 millimeters and will maintain the temperature of the fluid constant. The velocity of the fluid is multiplied is divided by two and the temperature of the blade is once again 800 Celsius. We consider this problem to be a steady, constant properties. We neglect heat generation and radiation. Let's start with the evaluation of the flux. So we we'll start with the original flux is equal to H, T infinity, and the original TS, which is the initial value is equal to 800. Therefore, we could say that H is equal to Q double prime T infinity minus TS. The first change we have is that the temperature of the surface becomes 700 Celsius instead of being 800 Celsius. We're going to see if any other factors inside of here besides TS changes, which are going to affect the flux. So let's evaluate how the change of X is going to h is going to be. In order to do that, we're going to evaluate the nasal number, which is the non-dimensional number related to, uh, to h. So we said nasal number is each equal to hl divided by k, and we know that is going to be a function of the non-dimensional position, the Reynolds number, and the prime number. So what we are going to see is evaluate the three conditions, see if any one of them changes to see if the nasal number will change. So what we could see is this. The position does not change because we're going to evaluate it at the same point x um, star. The velocity didn't change, so the renal number uh, does not change, and the prime number does not change since the fluid didn't change. So that means that the nasal number remains constant. Once we evaluate that, that means that n original is equal to the n for the first case. And notice that in this case, so we have h, l, k for the original cases, and we could say h1, l1, and k1. The value of k has not changed, the value of l has not changed, therefore the value of h has not changed either. And we could say that the h remains constant. If the value of h remains constant, that means that this is going to be the original value of h. So we could find that, that q double prime for the first case is going to be the original h, which is this value over here. So is the original flux that we have, divided by t infinity ts original, and then it's going to be T infinity minus T S for the first case, which in this case is going to be 700. If we solve this, we're going to see that the value for Q1, uh, Q double prime at the first case is going to be 122,000 watts per meter square. For the second part of the problem, we have two conditions that change. One L increases by two, and then the velocity goes down by two. We're going to do basically the same analysis. We're going to evaluate the nasal number, and this is a function of the position, the Reynolds number, and the prime number. The position remains the same, 
because the valuation is that at the same relative position even though the length has increased. The product number will remain constant since the fluid has not changed. Now let's evaluate the Reynolds number. We said that the Reynolds number, so let's evaluate Reynolds number original, is going to be equal to velocity L and kinematic viscosity. Let's now compare it to the value of the Reynolds number in stage two. The new velocity decreased by two, so we're gonna write it as V divided by two. And then we know that the length increased by two, so it's equal to 12, divided by the kinematic viscosity. If we notice the value of two and two cancel, so the Reynolds number in the second case is going to be exactly the same as the original Reynolds number. Therefore, once again, the nasal number does not change. In this case, then we could write again H, L, and K for the original case. And then we got H2, then L, or the length for the second part is 2L divided by K. K cancels, the value of H cancels, but notice that now we see that the value of H in the second part or the second component is going to be half of the original component. So that is going to tell us that Q double prime for the second part is going to be equal to the original component that we have, T, TS, and it's going to be half of this, and this is going to be T infinity minus TS. Notice that the value of T infinity and TS for the original and the second case are exactly the same, so these values will cancel. So at the end, Q double prime for the second case is equal to simply half of the value of Q in the original case which means that is equal to 47,500 watts per meter square. Please go back and understand how we are able to validate how the nozzle number changes and then how the value of the convection coefficient is affected and modified by the changes on the different cases.